here, and today just wanted to give a quick rundown of the deal that sent Hanley Ramirez to the Los Angeles Dodgers. So very late, well I should say early Wednesday morning, the Miami Marlins and Los Angeles Dodgers agreed to a deal that would send Hanley Ramirez and Randy Choate to LA in exchange for Nathan Eovaldi and Scott McGuff. Obviously the headliner in this deal is Hanley Ramirez, and he's had an interesting career trajectory. He was one of the top prospects in the Boston Red Sox system, traded to Miami for Josh Beckett and Mike Lowell in that big blockbuster deal, and he really established himself as a superstar really early on with the, Mi well, back then the Florida Marlins, and he had his biggest year in 2008, but since then he's kind of fallen out of favor with the ball club. He has seen a huge decrease in his statistics, and he's had some conflicts with ownership, had a public tiff with uh, owner Jeffrey Loria, so the Marlins have had this kind of conflict with, well, this guy has superstar talent, but do we want to deal with maybe his attitude or whatever it is that we don't like about this guy? And eventually push came to shove, and they decided after this incident that he had at Wrigley Field where he punched a fan and wound up getting an infection in his hand because he didn't take his medications, now's the time to deal the guy. So they agreed to a deal with the Los Angeles Dodgers and for the Marlins, it was about getting this guy out of town. We can't really deal with him anymore. We need to rebuild. We need to get more money. So let's get rid of him, let the Dodgers absorb the contract, and let's see what we can do about next year. Now, I know everyone's going to talk about the Marlins, and they're always pocketing the luxury tax dollars, and so this was, in one sense, back to the old Marlin ways. Once something doesn't go right, or even if it does go right, particularly after winning the World Series, we're going to sell off everything. So, in a sense, it's returning to their old stomping grounds, but... Also, this does make sense for them in that they spent a lot this offseason on big free agent contracts, and so if they want to contend next year, they're going to need to reload their system with young guys, and they're going to need to spend money again to fill those holes. And so, in a sense, I can see where the Marlins are coming from with this deal. Hanley Ramirez he has had a statistic slip basically since his big breakout year in 2008. He signed a huge contract and then it's just kind of, well, kind of fell off a cliff. And he was injured last year. But this year his power has rebounded a little bit. His isolated slugging percentage is up to 181, which is his highest total since 2009. But he's not getting on base as much and he's not slugging nearly as often as he used to. And so well, Dodger Stadium isn't really the place to go if you want to hit, but getting out of this environment that he was in, maybe he didn't feel comfortable anymore, maybe the, it was just so much on his mind that he couldn't handle it, so maybe there was just something about being in Miami that conflicted with Ramirez. So a change of scenery can always do a guy some good, and while he's not going to a favorable hitter's park, the Dodgers have a good coaching staff, uh, manager Don Mattingly is known as a player manager, so maybe that'll help him out a little bit. Maybe it's just a different lifestyle change will help Ramirez realize his potential again. He's on the right side of age 30, you know, he's only 28 years old, so he has plenty of time to turn this around. And for the Dodgers, it's all about not assuming a huge risk. The guys that they gave up in the deal, Nathan Eovaldi, uh, he was ranked the second best prospect by Kevin Goldstein on the Dodgers' top 11 list this year, and number three on the Baseball America list for the Dodgers. So, higher ranked guy, and but the thing is that he might just be a reliever. He could stay in the starting rotation, particularly in a big ballpark, maybe like Dodger Stadium, but... He projects better as a reliever. He could get some extra velocity on his fastball. A couple of ticks of velocity can help him become a lot more dominant than he is already in the rotation. And so the Marlins will probably keep him in the rotation as long as they can because starters are more valuable than relievers. But ultimately, he might be a bullpen guy, so it's not a huge thing to give up. And then McGuff, 27th ranked prospect, again, not a huge impact guy. 
the big thing with the Dodgers was absorbing money. The Dodgers take on all of Ramirez's contract, so they have to pay the rest of this season and then through, I believe it's 2014. So it's all about getting money, but the thing is the Dodgers needed a bat. They have Matt Kemp and Andre Ethier, and then beyond that in the lineup, contributions from AJ Ellis on occasion, but other than that, they don't really have much going for them. So they needed somebody, particularly in the infield, who could hit home runs, who could get, you know, the runs batted in, he could get on base. So change of scenery might help Hanley Ramirez turn it around, and it certainly is an upgrade over whatever the Dodgers have been sending out there this season, particularly concerning Juan Yareev. And with uh, D. Gordon out on the disabled list, they need somebody in the infield who can at least do something of worth. And D. Gordon wasn't even having a fantastic year. So I really love this deal for the Dodgers. They get a guy who has the world of potential for very, very cheap when it comes to prospects. It's just about absorbing money. And for the Marlins, they're getting a couple of prospects who could help them out. And they're getting rid of the payroll that they might need to clear out to you know, invest into the club. Well, hopefully they'll invest in the club into the future. So, just a quick take on the deal. Um, huge deal is probably going to go down for the rest of the trade deadline, so hopefully I'll have some of that for you later. And until then, see ya.